Hello friends, welcome to GT Science Tutorial. In this video, I am going to explain about the first law of thermodynamics. We know that there are four laws of thermodynamics. First law, second law, third law and fourth law. The first law of thermodynamics concerns with heat, energy and work done. In this video, we are going to see different statement of first law of thermodynamics, its present point of view, the mathematical expression of first law of thermodynamics and different conditions as well. So let's start. The first law of thermodynamics concerns with the change in energy. Did you know many years ago some engineers tried to make a perpetual motion machine that would work continuously without the expense of fuel. But we could not make that. What is the reason for that? The reason is first law of thermodynamics. First law of thermodynamics restricts us from making such type of machine. How? In this video we are going to see that. But first of all let's see the statements of first law of thermodynamics. The most famous statement of first law of thermodynamics is energy can neither be created nor can be destroyed but can be changed it can be changed from from one form to another so this is the first statement of first law of thermodynamics that is the definition of energy that we have been reading till now that is we can't create energy or we can't destroy energy as well but we can change one form of energy to another form of energy that we have been doing right like we convert electrical energy into kinetic energy in case of fan right we convert potential energy into kinetic energy in case of dam so one form of energy is converted to another form of energy but we can't create or destroy energy this is the first statement of first law of thermodynamics there are other statement as well let's see another one when when one type of energy energy disappears then exactly exactly equivalent amount of another energy another energy reappears reappears when one type of energy disappears then another exactly equivalent amount of energy reappears this is the second statement of first law of thermodynamics an example of that may be in case of coal if you see coal has very high amount of internal energy and when we burn coal then that internal energy converts into mechanical energy and we use that to run a train right let me write that as well coal has high amount of high amount of internal energy internal energy and when it is burnt when it is burnt that energy that is that internal energy that internal energy changes changes to mechanical energy mechanical energy and we run train by that so this is the second statement of first law of thermodynamics similarly let's see one more very important law of thermodynamics according to joule and maxwell joule and maxwell joule and maxwell give another law of thermodynamics according to joule and maxwell if heat and work uh, can be 
can be interconverted that is if heat can be converted to work or work can be converted to heat then then amount of amount of work is equal to amount of heat that is if heat and work are interconverted into each other then the amount of work done is equal to the amount of heat so these are some of the statement of first law of thermodynamics but the modern point of view that is the present point of view of thermodynamics is little bit different than this according to the classical statements energy is conserved all the energy is always conserved okay uh, between the system and surrounding there is exchange of heat and energy right but energy always gets conserved that is the first law of thermodynamics but according to the modern theory we know that in 19 in 1905 albert einstein albert einstein gave a very big theory that is the mass energy equivalence right E is equal to mc square this is the same formula by using which atom bomb was created so in 1905 albert einstein gave this formula and this formula tells us that energy and mass are interrelated to each other that means if we need to convert mass into energy then we just need to multiply it by c square that is the velocity of light square and if we need to convert energy into mass then we just have to divide that much amount of energy by c square that means we can convert energy and mass into each other okay we can convert energy into mass or mass into energy you can see over here if we take one kg of mass and if we multiply it with a velocity of light square then it gives very huge number that's how a large amount of energy is produced and that is used to make atomic bomb that much of energy comes out of that not only that nuclear fusion or fission reaction happens because of the same process okay now let me erase this portion to write the modern point of view of first law of thermodynamics The modern point of view of first law of thermodynamics is completely different. Let me write the statement of that. The energy, the energy and mass of system and surrounding, surrounding is conserved, is conserved. So this is the statement of first law of thermodynamics in modern point of view that means not only energy but mass is also conserved okay because we know that mass and energy are interrelated to each other that means one can be changed to another easily so this is the modern point of view of first law of thermodynamics now let's see the mathematical expression of first law of thermodynamics To get the mathematical expression of first law of thermodynamics, let us consider a system at initial condition, initial state, when the internal energy of the system is E1. This is the internal energy. And when it gains Q amount of heat, when it gains Q amount of heat from the surrounding, then it has to do certain work. Let that work done is W and it converts into the final state final state whose internal energy is e2 so this is the initial state with internal energy e1 it gains q amount of heat from the surrounding it does w amount of work done and it changes to the final state with internal internal energy e2 so this is the consideration that we make now after this we know that the net the net gain of energy the net gain of energy that is del e will be equal to how much e2 minus e1 as we know that energy energy is a state function energy is a state function that means it does not depend on the path it only depends on the initial state and the final state so obviously if we need to calculate the net gain of energy or the net change of energy then we need to subtract 
E1 from E2. This is the net gain of internal energy. Okay. Now, let, let the system, let the system gains, gains Q amount, Q amount of heat, heat from surrounding, from surrounding and and it does and it does w amount of amount of work done work done then the net the net heat gain is equal to the net heat gain will be equal to q minus w let us consider this to be equation number two okay so if the system absorbs q amount of heat and does w amount of work done then the net gate of heat energy will be equal to q minus w now this is net amount of heat energy this is sorry this is net amount of heat gain this is net amount of energy gain and energy and heat are almost same so we can equate them okay uh, let me erase this portion from one and two from equation 1 and 2 what we can write del e is equal to how much we can write this q minus w right now uh, let's find the value of q that is that will be equal to del e plus w if we find the value of q that is the heat energy then it comes to be this much let us consider this to be equation number 3 i am erasing this portion okay now this is for finite change okay this is the for the finite change now for infinitesimal change infinitesimal change dq will be equal to de plus dw for infinite change there will be d in front of every quantity dq will be equal to d plus dw let us consider this to be question number four if work done is if work done is pressure pressure volume work done if work done is pressure volume work done then we can write dq will be equal to de plus work done is obviously pressure times change in volume so it will be p into dv p into dv so this is the mathematical expression of first law of thermodynamics not only this equation 3 4 and 5 equations 3 4 and 5 are mathematical are mathematical expressions expressions of first law of first law of thermodynamics all these three equations are the uh, mathematical expression of first law of thermodynamics just at different conditions okay now if we see this formula carefully then what do we see whatever energy the system gets that splits up to do two type of work the first part of energy uh, changes the internal energy of the system or it supplies the internal energy you can say okay it helps to increase the internal energy remaining part of the heat energy gained uh, helps to do the work done okay so i can write over here i'm writing over here a part a part of heat is used to used to increase internal energy internal energy and and remaining part is used for work done work done so this is what the first law of thermodynamics actually is and this is the use of heat energy in first law of thermodynamics. Now let's see some of the conditions of first law of thermodynamics. The first condition for the first law of thermodynamics is for isobaric process. Isobaric process. 
we know that in isobaric process the change in pressure is zero dp is equal to zero that is the pressure remains constant p is constant then the change of pressure will be zero and therefore the first law of thermodynamics will be dqp it is at constant pressure okay will be equal to de plus p dv there won't be any change right comparing comparing this with dh is equal to de plus p dv dh means change in enthalpy whose expression is de plus p dv then we get then we get d q p will be equal to dh that means for uh, for isobaric process the uh, energy gained is helped to change the enthalpy of the system only okay now let's see another condition that is for isochoric process for isochoric process we know that v is constant the volume is constant so dv will be equal to zero then what do we get dq at constant volume will be equal to de plus p into zero because uh, the formula is dq is equal to de plus p dv and if dv is equal to zero then this will be equal to de plus zero right and it is equal to de that means for isochoric process all the heat energy is used to increase the internal energy only there won't be any work done in case of isochoric process okay now let's see the third condition that is for isothermal process for isothermal process for isothermal process we know that e is constant e means internal energy is constant therefore de will be equal to zero then what do we get dqe that is the internal energy internal energy is constant it is equal to d mean d means zero then that that will only be p into dv or we can write dqe is equal to w right the change in work done that means all the heat energy will be used to do the work done only that means there won't be any internal energy change in case of isothermal process similarly one more condition is there let us discuss that uh, the first fourth condition is for adiabatic process for adiabatic process for adiabatic process we know that the change in q is g con sorry the change in heat is zero or heat energy is constant so we know that dq will be equal to zero there then what do we get zero is equal to de plus p dv therefore minus de is equal to p dv and we know that this is will be equal to minus de is equal to dw right that means in case of adiabatic process the work done is happens in the compensation of energy internal energy that means the internal energy of the system decreases to happen the work done so these are some of the uh, condition of first law of thermodynamics now you might be wondering why we could not make perpetual motion machine how does first law of thermodynamics gives the answer of that so let's understand that as well we know that the first law of thermodynamics says dq is equal to de plus dw now according to this theory to do the work done obviously the heat energy has to decrease right has to be used without using heat energy can we do the work done no and the heat energy we obtain is from the fuel so without using fuel we cannot make a perpetual motion machine so first law of thermodynamics will not allow us to make the perpetual motion machine that would work continuously without the use of fuel that's all in this video i hope you understood everything about it if you like the video please share this video as much as you can and thank you for watching the video